Uh, yeah, um, this is Bang Bang Ray Hill. Uh, please press the like button and subscribe. Do you know what? The, the worst thing I ever did, I believe, yeah, was get on steroids, uh, testosterone, deckers and them sort of things. I got on the testosterone really, really bad. Um, I blew up to about, what, 23 stone. Uh, massive, but very violent, mate. I mean, you know, to, I mean, if you want to lose your wife, you know, that's the thing to be on, you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes I used to go home to my Danny, and my Danny was a really, really good cook, you know what I mean? And a couple of times I'd go home and she put maybe six, seven potatoes on my plate, baked potatoes and things like that, yeah? And I'd go to the, ne I'd go to the next day to get my dinner with Danny, and uh, there'd be four potatoes, and I'd go around, smash the plate up, throw the plate around the kitchen. Mate, that stuff was so bad, that was the testosterone, and it made me mad, mate. I mean, a couple of times I really hurt people with road rage, I mean, people say, like, the road rage, people are nutty, but I was nutty, mate. I mean, I used to drive a big Cherokee Chief, yeah, massive got Cherokee Chief. It was wide as anything, yeah. And uh, in that, I used to put my dogs, my bull mastiffs, you know, they used to go in the back of it with a bulldog. I saw I have three dogs in there, yeah. And go to Gunsley Park, walk around the park with the dogs and come back and, and, and take them home. But one day I was walking around the park, and uh, I got my ball mastiffs and my ball dog off the lead. They were as good as gold. They're no problem at all. Honestly, no problem at all. Dog walking around. The ball mast. My dog. My, my dog mastiff is right by my side. The the bitch is she's run off with the bulldog, and this guy and this guy all of a sudden decides to start f firing slugs, slug gun at my dogs. He's hit my bulldog, right? Yo! You know, look, I mean, they're so powerful bulldogs, aren't they? He's hit my bulldog, and I see what he's got. And I run down to there, right? And I'm on the what it come. You're on the voice. You lose your breath anyway. That You know, it attacks your heart, doesn't it? The muscles around the heart. Mate, I got to him, yeah? I swear to God. I mean, talk about mad, mad, mate. I've got a slug gun, right? I put a slug gun in his mouth, yeah, and fucking pulled the trigger with a slug gun, and a bomb, bang, you know, and knocked straight out. He was straight out. What? I didn't know. Do you know what I mean? That's how mad it. That's how mad you become, yeah. Left him, left him, fucking, fucking. Then walked away, left him. What I should have done is set my my, my dog ball mastiff on him, just ball, move, moved him about, set my ball my ball mastiff on him. Shit, he would have ripped it to pieces. My ball mastiff. He would have ripped that dog, that guy, to pieces, yeah? Honestly. Do you know what I mean? Why do people do silly things, you know what I mean? I'm, you know, silly things like that. And there's me doing another silly thing, putting a slug gun in his mouth and pulling the trigger and putting a slug in his back, his fucking throat. We did saw his swearing, yeah? But, you know, I mean, that's what happened on the voids. I'm coming back from the Barbican one day. I'm in my Cherokee Chief, yeah? And... Uh, my, uh, what I used to do, yeah, I used to, I mean, I used to hit so hard, yeah, I, I mean, I used to hit so, so hard that I always used to smash my knuckles up. When I say smash my knuckles up, I always cut them, you know, I always uh, hit so hard. And I used to hit so hard it come from the elbow, yeah. So when you hit someone, the elbow used to hurt, so it hits so hard, bang. And I used to always cut my, my hands up. Anyway, I'm coming back from the Barbican. I'm in my Cherokee Chief. Uh, we're going around the roundabout. Because of these, the, the bump was really stick out in the Cherokee. He hit this motor. I might have told you before, I don't know. He hit this motor, uh, pulled aside. I went crazy. They went crazy because they cut in front of me. It's their fault, really. So they pulled over to the garage and one jumped out. All over, bang! I bit this geezer. Well, listen, listen, mate. I'm telling you, I do. You know, like, it's, I must be gifted with, 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 with a punch. Mate, I hit this geezer. And it smashed his face to pieces. I heard his old face crunch. Whoop! I heard his old face crunch. Yeah, the other one I kicked up, the, kicked up, and he sort of like fell on top of him, and I just got him, punched him, kept punching him around the face, and just pulled him off and left him, and drove off. Yeah, and I thought you're definitely going to get yourself in trouble there. But he started it. You know what I mean? But the power, but the power. I mean, it was the voice as well involved with the voice, making you very, very violent. You know what I mean? Very violent. And I remember um, when when the police come to my house because um, me and my Danny did it well, uh, and I took my son 
And I said, no, you, you know, go, you go to your mum's, you do what you like, but you're not taking my son with you, even though mum only lived around the corner, you're not taking my son. I remember my son. So she decided, not she, it was the mother in all yeah, decided to phone the police on me. So the police come around knocking my door, and I've got big gates on my door, massive big gates, and I've got big bolt locks on my, on my front door, yeah, massive bolt locks, yeah. So it's really virtually impossible to get into, unless you get the other squad come, and they get the fire brigade, they've got the jacks that lift it, push your door out, and it, it, and it falls in, you can't knock that, I mean, you can't stop that. But anybody else could never get in, and the police didn't come with anything like that. All they come in was to, was to get my son and cause problems. So anyway, I'm in the house, I can hear them knocking at the door, please, please open the door. They couldn't go around the back because there's a mastiffs. Please, please open the door, open the door, please. But the gates are shut, you know, the gates are shut, and so they're shouting and screaming, they've they got these bars and smashing the, the door from the thing, right? So I opened the window, what's up, mate? Can we open the door? I'm going, no way. So the guy did, I swear to God, you'll believe this, mate. He got next door, there's a, he got next door and this guy's the builder, right? And he got this big ladder from this guy. They climbed up to the bedroom w window and it's still got gate. All my windows have got these big gates, security gates on them, right? And I come rushing out of my front room into the, into the room where he was. <laughs> this old Bill slid down, slid down, I'm not joking, slid down the ladder, Shit yourself, yeah. Anyway, and eventually, in the end, right, I opened the door. Right, I thought, oh, what's the problem? Problem? What's the point? I swear to God, mate, they come in my house like raving nutcases. Five of them, six of them. They could not. They could not <laughs> bend my arms at my back. They was trying as hard as they could to put cuffs on me. It was like. Kids, it was like kids, you know, <laughs> trying to put these cuffs on, yeah, and they couldn't put it on. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I said, Yeah, put it on the front, put them on the front, and that's it. I said, Listen, this is my baby, this is my child. She can have the child, of course, she can have the child, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dad, I've got the boy. What's the problem? Look around my house, my house is absolutely stunning, and I'm not kidnapping my son. She can come get my son at any time, but why call the police? There's no need for that, mate. He went, look, you know, without causing any problems, Ray, you know, Ray now, look. Ray, without causing any problems, can we take the boy? I went, listen, without causing any problems, no, you can't. You ain't taking my son. She can come round and take, come round and pick the son up and take the son. She ain't got to call the police to take my son. She can come round and take him. I'm quite calm now. I'm quite calm, calm down. Tell her to come round and pick my son up, right? In the end... They ain't gonna argue, they don't know problems, I don't know problems, yeah. So let it go. If I'm more Danny up, she comes out and picks the sun up. Drives off, goes away, everything's sweet. What happens? The old man. Me and the old man don't stop fighting. We've had so many fights, it's unbelievable. This is before. This is before it comes to the thing that we shot we shot each other and all this that and the other and went to the hospital he started stabbing. This is before that, you know. So I'm indoors and he come on the back. Now my ball masses are all, all, all around the garden and on the stairs and bits and pieces of bulldogs there and everything. So he's coming in, he knows the dogs, but they're still giving it the groups. They've got big gates, can't go in the garden, massive gates, yeah. He can't get into the garden, but he can get up to the stairs. So my dogs are going mad, warning me that there's somebody coming in, you know. So I'm walking up, I'm walking up, oh, what's up Mick? He went, I want to talk to you. This is, you know, me and I had no real bad trouble before that as such. I want to talk to you. I said, what's up Mick? He went, listen, you don't shout at my daughter, right? You don't take my fucking, my, 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 my daughter's child. You give my daughter. And I said, oh, hey, hold up. Who are you talking to, mate? Okay, Mickey Johnson, he's a well-known gangster. He's one of the Thursday gang. He's a bit of an old man, got one eye, he knows a lot of gangsters, he knows a lot of villains, yeah, and so do I. And he ain't fucking bullying me, I ain't having him bullying me. So I said, okay, Mick, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. He said, listen, don't muck about with me, boy, because you can come right and stuck, yeah? I went, oh, Mick, sweet. Now I'm on the voice, 
I'm on the way. I really don't want to be much about of him. You know what I mean? So I'm in the kitchen, and my kitchen was an L shape. It was a long, very long, but the the the, 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 the tops, the top was an L shape. Yeah, like that. And you've also got a big fridge freezer here. You got all the stuff underneath and all tiled top and everything. It's absolutely stunning. Big scales at the end, big table at the end, and it is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and. Um, I used to buy a, a stuff called um, Fitz and Floyd. Fitz and Floyd uh, was stuff that made that, that made China. Anybody must know. I don't know if anybody watching my podcast knows Fitz and Floyd. Fitz and Floyd you get from Harrods. Absolutely stunning porcelain. It's usually like big fruit bowls, like off fruit. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, like uh, birds. All, it's all be- absolutely stunning. Yeah, and it's quite expensive. But I was getting good money. Danny loved it, which I went, went there and bought it. And I had this right at the end, right, I had this big um, thing of a pineapple, massive great pineapple, yeah? And it was a bowl, you know, like not, not a bowl, you put things inside it, yeah? The lid comes off with a pineapple thing. It was absolutely stunning. I had it on the corner of this thing. So Mick shouted and all of it, this, that and the other. Right, I swear to God. <laughs> I ate this, I ate this pineapple, right? Pineapple, this pineapple, right? <laughs> like I thought it was my father and all. I can't, I can't take a liberty, but I did later on in life. I can't take a liberty. I'm gonna eat this pineapple and let, let me see what it's about, right? I whack. I ate this pineapple, mate. I swear to God, it's pine. I mean, it's quite thick china. It is thick. It's quite hard to do. You eat something like that, and it's gonna go in it. But when I ate it, he stood there. Whoop, my fish smashed out at it, right? I said, do me a favour, Mick. I said, do me a favour, mate. Leave my house, right? Go the way you come down the stairs and don't come back here, mate. I went, Mickey, please, don't fucking come back here causing me problems with my son and my wife here, yeah? your daughter. I know it's your daughter, and I know I shouldn't have said it, but I said a lot of things that I shouldn't have said. I'm sorry, please don't come up here giving me the grief or you threatening. And he walks out of the house and says, yeah, you're going to get it. I went, oh, what, Mick, just go down and do what you've got to do, yeah? And that's when me and him started falling out, um, when I started giving him bits and pieces because he got very jealous because of the people I was working with, you know. And uh, one day, one day, one day, right, he was with this guy. I can't say his name. He was with this guy, mate, and this guy was what I don't know, five foot four, five foot five, not very tall, but big, a lump, yeah. Thought he was big time Charlie Potatoes, one of them ones again, big time Charlie Potatoes. I'm walking down the road with one of my dogs. He coming along with Mickey, being all leery, shouting his mouth about, I mean hold up. Let me take the dog back in Georgia. Took my ball master back in the house, come out to the house, said, Come on, man, you're over the park. Mickey went, Come on, he get over the park with me, he'll smash you to pieces. I said, All right, Mickey, he might do, yeah. Went over the park, mate. And this, I've got to say it, I've got to say it, this geezer could have a fight. This geezer could have a fight. But the only thing was, yeah, I was a little bit stronger and a little bit fitter than what he was, even on the roids. I was run every day. It was hard work because of the, the, the steroids around the art and all that game, but I was run every day, so I was quite fit. I was 20 odd stone fit. This guy could have a fight. He, 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 I mean, he hurt me. He, I mean, he, 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 he did hurt me, you know. I'm not saying I'll beat him, but he wouldn't want to fight me again. Do you know what I mean? He wouldn't want to fight me again. The guy could have a fight. He wasn't a fool. Mickey must have picked him out or whatever he picked him out of, but he put him in the paper and he went on a fight with Ail. <laughs> I don't know. But me, yeah, me and him, me and him um, sort of like retired. Uh, I'd had enough, he'd had enough, and uh, we were both best, best of pieces. Mickey, Mickey was like shocked uh, at, at, at the way the fight went. But I'll tell you what, this guy could have a well. And I hit him a few times on the chin. He went down. Stay down, and he got up, and then they kept going. So, big, big, big respect for this guy. Big respect. And then, um, 
one day, I went around Mickey, Mickey's, and uh, he was there, Johnny Bindon. I mean, I I met Johnny Bindon a few times before when we was down at Cromwellian, Cromwellian, and um, and I met him down at Cromwellian uh, Club, the uh, the sports club, that the what's it called, it club, a gaming club, in Cromwell Road, uh, the Cromwellian. I met him down there quite a few times. Had a few bad words with him, you know. Larry, 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 big guy, always carrying a blade, always carrying a blade down there, always involved with problems. Every all the birds loved him because of what he had, uh, and, you know, and what he, what he should do. He was involved with uh, royalty and all that. I don't think he was involved with at that time, but when I met him, he was yeah. He was uh, later on when I met him yeah. But we used to down the club man. Yeah? He was I was with, got my my mate Danny Williams. Met this guy a few times. Yeah, Levy, Levy, Levy guy, but uh, big guy. Uh, never really bothered me that much. Me and him had a few words. But anyway, when I went around Johnny, Bin, Johnny, uh, 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 Mickey, Mickey uh, Johnson's house uh, with Danny, he was there. Bindam was there. Um, all right, John, how you going? All right, uh, mate. All right, I was talking about Cromwellian and them sort of places. And uh, I was talking about uh, when he got done for the dark turnout, uh, Johnny Dark, when he the stabbings and all that, this, that and the other. I always go down the yacht club with Danny Williams as well. And I, I remember seeing him a few times, Bindon down there. Uh, he was, listen mate, Bindon could have a fight. Bindon was a dangerous person. He got involved with royalty. He got involved with acting. He was a good actor. Uh, he could have a right fight, yeah. And me and him, me and him, you know, really, uh, it had to, it, me and him had to have a row. Well. Me and him had to have a fight. I mean, his name was Biffo, yeah? And I like that name, Biffo, uh, you know. And uh, anyway, but his name was Biffo. And um, me and him one day, I went to a club, he had a club with a guy called, uh, uh, oh, fuck it, oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot his, I forget his name, I'll get his name in a minute, yeah? He had a club with a guy that I was in prison with. And uh, this guy died of parrot disease, bird disease, yeah, seriously. Alan Stanton, Alan Stanton, I mean, he died of parrot disease. I went down there to the, the club uh, to see John with with him, Alan Stanton, and uh, John was asking me to work in his door. And I said, look, what do you work in the door for? You've got a big guy like you can have a white fight. And I said, listen, I ain't got... I ain't, I, listen, I've got a club, but I don't want to start fighting. Would you look out the door? I said, no, nah, mate, I'm not interested in that. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm with a proper company. I don't need that. You know, I don't need to work on doors, you know, for not for not for you, not for anybody. You know what I mean? Got white Larry with me. You know, me and him, honestly, me and him would have to have a fight, me and Johnny Bindon. You know, I knew that. I knew that. And I knew he always carried a knife. You know, I always, I knew that anyway. And... And I knew that he, he knew a lot of people. He was a big time gangster, Johnny Bindon. But, you know, it, so was I. So was I. I was a big time enforcer. He didn't bother me, mate. He didn't bother me, Johnny Bindon. Come on. You know, if it had to be, it had to be. I ain't going to buckle down on no one, especially someone like that. You know what I mean? Who f Listen, the more someone thinks they're Larry and they're big time Charlie Potatoes, so the more I want to fight them. Because that is what I do. You know what I mean? That is what I do, and I love doing it. You know what I mean? If you're a big fucking time Charlie Potatoes, and you think you're the big, big one, I'll have a row with you, mate. I, listen, if I come second best, listen, you won't want to fight me again, mate. You won't want to fight me again if I come second best. But I don't want to be second best, I want to be first. But if I do come second best, you wouldn't want to fight me again. And the only way I'll become second best is if you knock me down and keep me down, because I ain't going to stop. You know what I mean? I ain't going to stop. And... And the way that I used to fight, you wouldn't want, want, want you know, I mean, as I was saying to you, sometimes I used to put people's head on, on, on the curbs and smash their heads and knock all the teeth out. Because if you've got to be, you've got, listen, mate, me and, I told you this a long time ago, right, me and my mate Alec Jones, right, Alec Jones from, from uh, Paddington, let me tell you something, this guy called Alec Jones, yeah, People say to me, yeah, this, that, the other people in their fights and all this, that. This guy that me and him used to be together most of the times, working together, a guy called 
Alec Jones. Remember that, Alec Jones, yeah? This guy can have a right fight. I wouldn't want to fight him. Me and I wouldn't want to fight him. He mucks about a bit, me and him. I wouldn't want to fight him because he can have a fight, mate. He's about one of the only guys that I wouldn't want to fight because he give you some. He give you this guy's a good boxer, mate. He could box, yeah. But not only could he box, he could fight. I've seen him knock. That's why me and him was together. I've seen him knock people out so easy. You get hit him with a left hook, mate. You're in trouble. You're going over. This geezer can bang. Alec Jones Paddington. This geezer, if you're watching this, Alec, all the best mucker. Um, but I've got to say, um, I mean, me and him have bashed up loads of people. Loads of people, not because just to be a bully, bashed them up because what we was doing. We was in forces. We was collecting money for people, yeah? And the, the people had to go. We didn't muck about, mate. If you don't want to play with that, you're going to get hurt, you know? And anyway, so me and Alex... Uh, and he was involved with the McCoys, Billy McCoy and all that lot, and Tommy McCoy and, and Barney McCoy and, and I mean, and Dominic McCoy. I mean, the McCoys, I mean, I fell out with Barney over something so stupid, it's so trivial, but we're mates now. I've not heard from Barney for a long time. I hope he's okay. Uh, Tommy, Billy, Dominic, I don't, I haven't heard from them. I mean, the powers of mine, all big, all big, big guys, all like, you know, 20 stones, 22 stones, massive, massive people that can have it. I mean, they had a few, have had pubs, I mean, and all that. And, uh, you know, those, we used to drive around together. You know, uh, Tommy, he, he was an airful. Billy was an airful. Uh, Tommy's about 30 stone, I think, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Billy, like, no, I'm not quite sure. Billy's about 30 stone, I think. Uh, but, you anyway, know, nice, nice people. Uh, as I say, me and Barney fell out, but he's, Barney's all right, mate. He's, Doing the right thing now. He's got a pop boxing uh, uh, club down at uh, Isle of Sheppey, and uh, he trains. He trains some good fighters down there. My mate Kevin Paddock goes down there and trains. Uh, I keep saying I'm going to get Kevin Paddock. I mean, I've had people on my podcast saying, "Yeah, you keep saying this, you keep saying that." You don't even know Kevin Paddock. Well, I'm sorry all that, but I do. I mean, me and Kevin Paddock go back a long way. I mean, I fought Kevin, I drew with Kevin, and I drew with Sid. Kevin Paddock beat Lenny McLean, and I think Sid Paddock beat Lenny McLean. But Lenny McLean never put them people in his book, which he didn't. The, oh, I mean, there were some good, good fighters who beat Lenny McLean, but Lenny McLean never put them in his book, yeah? Listen, if you get beat, you get beat. Why not, why not make, why try to make out that you're better than you're not, you are, yeah? Okay, you was a good fighter. Lenny was a good fighter. He was a very, very hard man. Very hard man, yeah? But we all get beat, mate. We all get beat. There's nothing, well, there's nothing to be beat. And it's even better if you get beat and you're second best, mate. And you're no one wants to fight you again. You're the business. That's when you know you're just as good as winning the fight, really. Don't give up. Don't give up, but lose the fight on points. Don't lose a fight being knocked out and all that, yeah? Or when you stop, or when we both stop the fight, you've had enough and you know the man's better than you, second best, it don't matter, but he don't want to fight you again. I've had that, mate. I've had that. I mean, my mate Gary Francis, another guy, another guy, Gary Francis, very, very dangerous man, Gary Francis, mate. I mean, I've known Gary all my life, yeah? I grew up with Gary. Uh, he is very, very dangerous, Gary Francis. People go, I'd be if everyone's dangerous, you talk to them. Well, they are. Go Francis, he can have a little fight, but he's more dangerous when he's got something in his hand. And he ain't afraid to use it. He will cut you to pieces. I've seen him cut people to pieces, mate, Go Francis. And he ain't fighting a nobody. I'm telling you, he ain't fighting. It might be what big mouth, yeah, you listen. Listen, he will cut you to pieces. Everyone's going, yeah, but I can use it. Can you? Can you? A lot of people's arsehole go, you know what I mean? But I don't, I mean, Gary Francis was one of the first guys I've ever known to use knives, cutting people up. Now it's a regular thing. People just do it witty nitty. It's a disease. People just go around cutting people. But believe me, listen, uh, the people out there right, who are going around stabbing people and killing them, it ain't worth it, mate. It ain't worth it. I've been in prison all my life, but not for stabbing people, for armed robberies, forces, and for GBHs, separate murders, and all them sort of things, yeah? 
it ain't worth it, you know. Because in the end of the day, right, you get something like I just got an IPP. I ain't bragging about an IPP, mate, but I got an IPP. That's what happens in the end. If don't, it's, you don't get it no more. Now you get an indefinite sentence. You get a life sentence, yeah? They just chuck big sentences at you now, mate. You know, and these people, young kids, yeah, who you think are really tough and really hard, going out shooting people, stabbing people, remember, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. It's the law of averages you're going to get caught. And you're going to get big bird, mate. And you're going to get big bird. You're going to go in prison. You're going to get all your niceties in there, all your, all your toiletries, your stationery, all your food. You've got your DVDs. You've got your nice television. You've got your tele. You've got your curtains. You've got your bedspreads. You've got your nice pillowcases. You've got all that. You're meeting people, buying drugs. You love it. But you've got to remember, whatever you've got out there, you're going to lose. You lose your woman, you lose your mum, you lose your dad, you lose your kids, you lose your brothers, you lose your sisters. Because you're going to get so much birds, you're going to go and get 15, 20 year rep, wreck. And when you come out, all them people you know, they have moved on, mate. They're gone. They don't want to know you. Listen, believe, take it from someone who knows. I've had it, mate. I've had it. I've had everything. Big houses, big cars, lots of money. Now, yeah, I've got something nice now. But I, I work for it, not not gone on the pavement, not thieved. I've got something nice because I work for it, yeah. Because I want to move on in my life. I wrote a book, a book you're going to love, yeah. I wrote a book. I've got chances of going Netflix. I've got chances of maybe getting a series. I've got other chances of doing other things, yeah. You know what I mean? But out of everything bad comes something good, yeah. Remember that, yeah. But don't stop stabbing people, shooting people and going 20 years, 25 years and getting in there, mate. A year, listen, a year is like a lifetime in there, mate. It's like a lifetime. But remember, one year, you've got to do 25 of them years, mate. And then you think, and you're going to come out a mess. You're going to come out institutionalised. You're going to come out just everybody doesn't, you're not even known. No people won't even know you, don't even know who you are. You become no one again. You become no one, nothing. Nothing. All them people you know who have moved on, all they're dead. All the people, all the people wrapped around you, your family, they've moved on as well. When you come out, you're just a pain in the arse. And remember, you they might, they might go and give you only £40 a week. So lucky. You, and, hey, you did, mate. You got, you lost it. They're going to take everything from you. Confiscation orders, big confiscation orders. Two mil, three mil, four mil, five mil. Take it all from you. And you, when you come out, they're going to follow you. They're going to make sure you can't spend no money. They're going to take it from you. Remember, this is what it's about, right? I'm trying to tell you, right? I was one of big doing this, doing that, and enforcer. Hurting people, getting money, getting money, doing work with the proper people, big companies. Mate, I loved all these people. Believe me, I love, I still love all these people, yeah? But I ain't going to go back to it. I ain't going to go back to it. I ain't going to back to it, mate. I've changed my life around. I don't want prison no more. I've had enough. I've had enough. Don't mean to say if someone's taking the piss out of me, I want to have a row with them, because I will. But what I'm saying to you is, I ain't... I learned a lesson, right, when I was in prison, right, a big lesson, and it was through psychology, and they also talked to me about when you wake up in the morning, just challenge your thoughts from negative to positive, or from positive to negative, yeah? Get it all right. Sometimes it's got to be a negative thinking, yeah? Sometimes, most times it's got to be a positive thinking. And challenge your thoughts, always challenge your thoughts, remember that, yeah? Always Challenge your thoughts in the morning. Look at the pros and cons. Is it worth it? No, it ain't. You know what I mean? Always. Because, listen, mate, if you can do that, if you can challenge your thoughts and look at the pros and cons and even look at your triggers, yeah? Your triggers. Your triggers could be certain people. Certain people you get mixed up in that pull you in, make you do things you think, yeah, all right, back, I'll do that again. I might go and get five or six hundred quid. Five or six hundred quid. You might go and get a recall and never get out of five years for five hundred pounds. So be careful, yeah? Look at all the triggers. 
Look at everything. Look at the roads. Look at the people. You know, challenge it, mate. Challenge it. Look at it, yeah? yeah honestly, at the end of the day, you think, do you know what? It ain't worth it, mate. When we're kids, when we're kids, we do things, crazy things. We're not even thinking about what we do because we're kids. When I say kids, up to 25, 26 men, young men, we do things, silly things. And to get a 10 stretch, you come out at 30, ain't so bad. But when you come out, when you're getting 30 and you're getting 25 years, you come out at six, you come out at 25, you come out at 55 years, mate, then it ain't worth it, mate. It ain't worth it. Believe me, it ain't worth it. Just, I, you know, I, I don't want to see people out there get put in prison. Prisons are, listen, prisons, police, the courts, the barristers, the QCs, the probation service is a business. Is a big, big business. Remember that. It's a business. They're living off of us. Remember that. So we don't want them to live off of us. we got to say, push them aside. We don't want them to earn fortunes from us. So remember, that they don't even earn it straight. They don't earn it straight because the pen is mightier than the sword. Remember that. These judges, you got to remember, they go to, they go to school. They go to school, right? When they're, what, six, five prep schools, four private prep schools. From there, they go to another school, private schools. Then they go to a boarding school, whatever, boarding schools. They're putting a book, never see mum and dad. Never see mum and dad. They're putting mum and dad, don't see them. Chuck them away. Put them in a boarding school. They might see mum and dad once, twice a year. Mum and dad really ain't got no love for them. All right, love, buy them bits and pieces. They ain't got no love for them. Them kids don't know what love is. This is why they become judges, because judges have got no feelings. They can't have feelings. They've got no love in their body. They've got no love because they've never been loved in their life from anybody. This is why judges are like they are, you know, because they've gone through all the school systems where they ain't seen mum and dad, maybe see them once a year. And then, you know, and then once a year until they've been five, six years in, in, their, in their boarding schools, yeah? Might have seen mum and dad for about 10 hours all that time. It ain't worth it, mate. It ain't worth it. They're the ones, they're the ones that do what they do to us because they've got no love in their body, mate. They've got no love. How can anybody, right, put someone away for 25, 30 years for doing, getting money to support their kids? And they've got wife and they've got wife and kids, and they don't even laugh about it. Listen, it ain't do it ain't. As I'm, I'm not being a hypocrite, right? But it ain't worth it, mate. It ain't worth it because them people have got no feelings. They bang you up forever. They bang you up forever. So remember that they got no feelings. It doesn't matter when you go to court crying your eyes open. They just don't care about about that, mate. He don't care about that. Barristers don't care. Your QC don't care. They don't care about us. So don't let them work. Stop it. Stop going away in court. Stop getting nicked. Stop this. Stop that. Because then you put them out of work. Anyway, this is Bang Bang Mail. Please like and subscribe. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.